And hello. Perfect. Hello. Uh, what are your names and, and uh, what are you guys doing today for all of those who are watching on our stream? My name is Sueda. My name is Ayam. Um, we're student organizers here at Columbia University. Um, we're currently sitting in our tent. Um, break from the programming of the day, but uh, there's a lot going on outside. Um, we have a large community support. Uh, students are coming in and out of the encampment, uh, participating in our programming um, around Palestine and around the genocide in Gaza. So uh, you guys are a part of uh, CUAD, uh, Columbia University uh, uh, Apartheid Divest, right? Am I, uh, is it, yes. am I saying that right? Okay, yep. so uh, would you mind briefly telling everyone, we already went through uh, the website, but would you mind briefly telling everybody watching at home what uh, the stated goals are for CUAD? Also, this Welcome. is Lolo. I don't know if you guys know him. Hello. <laughs> Hi. He's a he's an he's an alumni who is defending Israel. That's uh, not true. That's not true. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. He's... We hate to hear that. We hope that's not true. It's no, not no, true. it's not true. It's, it's not, not true. true. it's not true. It's not true. I'm sorry. I just no. Uh, Lolo is a, a Columbia Law uh, alumni as well, and no, he is of really? course anti-Zionist. <laughs> we actually have a lot of law students uh, participating with us as well um, across the uh, campus community. It's not just undergrads. It's a combination of graduate students, undergraduate students, um, law school students. So, yeah, we have a couple of your colleagues here probably with us right now. Um, with regard to Quad's demands, uh, Quad is a movement that uh, organization, a coalition organization that has been active for um, six months now since the onset of the genocide. It has five demands that are stated on the website, but we are focusing on a we are focusing on a number of those demands as part of this encampment. Uh, the first one being complete financial divestment uh, from companies that are complicit in the uh, fast ongoing genocide in Gaza as well as the slow displacement of people within and throughout occupied Palestine. We're also demanding uh, amnesty for our students. I'm sure you've seen that following the first encampment, we had close to 100 students be unfairly suspended post their arrest. We're demanding universal amnesty for those students, as well as amnesty for our students who've been disciplined as part of the six months of pro protests that have been ongoing on, the, on, on this campus since October, as well as amnesty for our professors who don't have uh, academic freedom within their classrooms and are being disciplined by the university for the content of their speech, for speaking about settler colonialism, for speaking about the ramifications on public health of the genocide. That's where we're at right now. Do you... I do you, like to pitch in. Sorry. Do you have anything to add? We're, I think we're, she did an excellent job. <laughs> were there... Uh, there were also legal observers who were arrested at the, at, at the protest, is that correct? Yes, two. So what's the atmosphere like now, uh, today? Today, we would say, what would you say? I would say the atmosphere is beautiful. I would say that there is joy everywhere and exuberance. There is light shooting out of people's eyes. It is immaculate, the way that we've kept this camp, and the way that we've kept morale up in this movement. I've never seen the people more confident. I have never seen more people out here in support. And I have never seen Columbia University more scared. So um, I have a, I have a question for you guys. How many students do you know uh, the exact number of students that have been suspended or uh, or, or have uh, gotten any kind of punishment whatsoever uh, for their unconditional support for Palestinian lives? You know, recognizing that Palestinians are human beings, for example. You know, things that are obviously considered uh, unacceptable by the Columbia University administration. Well, um, there is a number of students, I think uh, close to 100 or maybe even over that were disciplined in various ways, like not suspension, but maybe like academic probation or being called into like university hearings and things of that nature um, prior to the encampment. And then there were over 100 students who were arrested. Um, as part of the encampment, and I am, uh, was one of the students who was arrested as well, and he could speak more on that. Yeah. Um, and over 80 of those students, some at Barnard College, some at Columbia College, some grad students, but all within um, you know, the framework of Columbia University, have been suspended since the first encampment as well. And uh, as of last night, we are again being threatened with disciplinary uh, action by the university for, uh, for maintaining this space. And if I would like to say more. So... We've also heard reports that uh, Columbia University threw out the belongings of a lot of the students that were uh, 
instantly suspended. And also on top of that, we've heard reports that uh, some of the students did not have access to their dorm rooms after being suspended, having their uh, having their cards made inactive, uh, leaving them out in the dark, literally in the middle of New York City. Uh, with not really anywhere else to go, which is uh, greatly endang endangering the lives of the students uh, when, when Columbia University is tasked with, they have a, a, that, a responsibility. All of that immediately following arrest. No break in between. And I want IM to say more on that. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Columbia has evicted many okay. of our, our peers, many of our comrades. They've left them without food near shelter. And we at the People's Encampment have been providing those things to those students. A shame Columbia's University inex Columbia University's inexcusable behavior in this regard, putting its safety, putting the safety of its students at direct risk. Has Columbia University in the past been more open minded towards, let's say, right wing uh, content creators coming onto the campus, making the campus a less safe space? Uh, the likes of uh, I don't know. I, I don't know if there's uh, any recent uh situations involving like uh, like a ben shapiro type or a matt walsh you know like transphobic content creators reactionary right-wing right-wing charlatans that uh oftentimes require police presence and and security um frankly no i haven't seen them i may be wrong um but i haven't seen people okay. of them. all right um we have been creating so much joy and so much beauty at this encampment. And we've been speaking with so many people who are here in solidarity and who are here in support, that it totally drowns out any of that negativity that is. And again, we want to bring the conversation back to demands. And we believe that as much pressure um, that we can garner from mainstream media, from alternative media uh, regarding the demands of the uh, Quad organization is incredibly important. Uh, again, like I said, financial divestment, um, universal amnesty, uh, academic freedom, and a disclosure, disclosure of finances, where our direct and indirect investments lie. And as the faculty said earlier, to keep the NYPD out of this campus and away from brutalizing students as happened on Thursday. And why, why is divestment such an important priority for you? Well, um, it's, the, it's a matter of the fact that we're students here, we're putting in our tuition money, um, and whether we want it or not, whether I'm morally against it or not, my money for an education is being used to refuse the right of life um, to other people. As a student, I'm against this. I, in good conscience, would not use my own personal money in this way, but my right to, my right to direct where the money is going is being taken away from me. And um, this is not unprecedented in Columbia uh, University. Everybody knows Columbia is a protest school. Um, people make jokes about this all the time. In 1968, again, we had people, um, we had our, our previous um, generation of students occupying buildings, demanding divestment from apartheid South Africa. Um, only recently, the university divested from Russia. This university has no holdings in Russia. But because uh, U.S. geopolitical interests are on the side of Israel in the ongoing genocide, uh, the university is reluctant, reluctant to act in a principled manner, reluctant to act in a moral manner, and is committed to ignoring the overwhelming support Quad has on this campus. We've passed um, divestment referendums and uh, resolutions in a number of our undergraduate and graduate schools, the latest one being at Columbia College. So that's the undergraduate school. We got the results of that this morning. We know that on this campus, there is mass support for refusing complicity, material com complicity in violence throughout occupied Palestine. Um, and the university continues to, to deny this. Do you feel like uh, the militant actions that Columbia University has engaged in against those speaking out against Israel's genocide is actually uh, blowing back in their faces uh, and the support has only increased now with increased media presence on campus? I mean, um, it's not even just increased media presence on campus because we had a press moratorium um, the first few days of the encampment. What does that mean? Press were not allowed here. Mm -hmm. The only ones who got in were people who came in like before gates were closed or who um, negotiated a way in through the journalism school or something like that. Um, the university most definitely doesn't want press here. It's incredibly bad for their reputation. They've already suffered so much reputational damage. The optics are horrible. They haven't had NYPD on this campus for over 50 years. The fact that there were hundreds of students encircling our encampment as the NYPD came down to brutally arrest each of us was of astronomical import in terms of rallying the student body to our side. And we also believe that um, we have hope 
that our demands are going to be met. We've been in uh, the negotiations process with the university since Friday, um, and we believe that we hold uh, leverage um, within those negotiations. That being said, no matter what the outcome is, we firmly believe that this encampment has uh, sparked something across the nation. I want to recognize the fact that Vanderbilt, as well as um, one other school that I don't remember, I think not sure which one it was, but Vanderbilt specifically um, did an encampment before we did, and they're not getting nearly as much uh, media attention, despite the fact that four of their students were unfairly yeah. expelled. And if anybody's watching, I would ask them to pay as much attention to Vanderbilt as they are to Columbia. Um, but going back to negotiations, even if we do not get what we want, and I'm fairly, fairly certain and cautiously optimistic that we are we getting what, get we, what want, we want, um, even if that doesn't happen, we know that we've sparked a movement across this nation. Yale, um, their students were recently arrested this morning. Um, the new school, um, NYU. Um, what other schools, I am? Princeton. Princeton. I think many of the schools in Boston. This is the new thing that's happening, the occupations, and um, we think they're fruitful. All of that being said, something else that's really, really important is to not divert attention away from Gaza. Um, yeah. This is getting a lot of attention and it's important because we need to make sure that we cut off the flow of money from here to corporations that are facilitating genocide. Um, but it's also important that we don't detract attention away from Gaza. They're still discovering mutilated bodies in Gaza right now and we don't want to be, we don't want to be diverting attention from that. This is in support of Gaza, in solidarity with Gaza. And uh, so Gaza has to be central in everything. What do you have to say to Joe Biden, uh, who recently gave an impromptu response to directly what you guys are doing in Colombia, where uh, his uh, reaction was, I condemn the oh, no, anti-Semitic no, protests, Biden told the reporters a couple hours ago. I also condemn those who don't understand what's going on with the Palestinians. A little bit of both siding. People very well understand what's going on with the Palestinians. Um, if they had not understood over the past 75 years, they've most definitely understood in the past six months. We have had so much, like I am said, press and journalists within this um, encampment area over the past past few days. And um, they've seen what a peaceful movement this is um, against our university's complicity in genocide. Um, we have community guidelines that everybody is being briefed on as they enter within the space. And that includes the fact that this is a welcoming space for everybody, um, no matter what their ethnic, racial, or religious background is. And we've held religious ceremonies for people of Jewish backgrounds, of Muslim backgrounds. Um, JVP held their Sabbath uh, program here. Muslims have been holding their congregational prayers here. For every student who's here in solidarity, um, this is a peaceful space. Uh, Quad had already on its own socials released a statement um, regarding uh, actors who are unaffiliated with Colombia in this space. And again, like we said, we don't want to be diverting attention from what our demands are. Our demands are clear. And the nature of this movement has been clear for the past roughly one week in which it has been going on. You're all students, so you also have to be in class. You have to be being students. So what's We're not that? Really being <laughs> So what's what's that like for the students that that are there or um you know well, prior just that reality if you, come, if you come to this camp um you can see that students are on their laptops like on the lawn trying to get what work they can get done the library is quite close to us the people who still have tap access swipe access and haven't been suspended are still using the libraries as is their right other students who may be busy are simply not doing work at all and i guess that's what's going to have to happen um, we're calling supportive faculty to conduct their classes on the lawn. We've had a number of faculty, um, you know, sit on the tarps and uh, give their lessons to their class, like members of their class, as well as other students on the lawn who are willing to listen. And we're fostering an educational space here. We may not be students in the um, typical sense of the word right now, like completing our assignments or going to class, but we've had so many educators in this space. Um, community educators, labor organizers, people committed to committed to um, divestment and liberation, people standing in solidarity um, with students here who've come and spoken on the lawn, gave, um, gave us um, encouragement and shared their insight. And I will add that this is an education far better than the imperial faux social justice education offered in these liberal institutions. This is a real and radical edu education for those of us who care about 
the actual an emancipation of the human race. That's actually uh, an interesting point that you made. I want to I want to ask you guys both about what led you to take such brave action against your own universities. Like, what was it? Was there a pivotal? Uh, was there a pivotal wanna, moment for you? Back on the framing, not brave. It's not brave at all. No. It's been six months. Um, we students at Columbia have been protesting just like students across the nation, just like Palestinians themselves in Palestine. Um, students have been process, protesting for quite some time and haven't received um, any response or acknowledgement of their demands. It's not brave of us to be in solidarity with Gaza. It's the baseline. I, I agree. Yes, it's something that we aspire to. And genuinely, as students here on this camp, we, we do not want to be framed as like brave students doing something. Um, we're humbled by the recognition that Palestinians um, and Gazans particularly, like Gazan journalists who have been like referring to this encampment, were humbled by their recognition. We are inspired by them. Um, uh, this is not bravery. This is the least we should be doing. You have to do whatever you, whatever is within your power. You have to take some sort of calculated risks for justice. Amen. What was, uh, but beyond that, uh, what was, uh, I'm interested personally, like what was your, your experience? Like what led you towards Palestinian eman uh, emancipation? What was a moment of recognition for both of you? Whether it was from I early on, cause I'm, look, I'm Turkish, I'm Muslim. I'm Turkish, I, I, I grew up. Oh, oh nice. Do you, do, do you Muslim, son? And, <laughs> huh, okay. That's awesome. Uh, I thought you were from England, so I'm sorry for assuming that you have a little bit of an accent. <laughs> um, but, what but, us? but regardless, as, as someone who's Turkish, uh, obviously, like this is an issue that I have uh, always had an opinion on for as long as I know myself, but I, I'm always interested in finding out about how other people have come to this recognition, specifically Americans. Americans are different, uh, various different backgrounds. Is, um, so if you could elaborate on that a little bit, that'd be great. Actually, I am and I come from, I would say, completely different backgrounds, like racially, religiously, um, like places of origin, whatever. So I think it's interesting um, to hear his answer as well. Personally speaking, I've always been doing social justice work, like throughout high school. I think that every single human being, by virtue of being on this earth, um, has to stake a claim in the cause for justice and has to pick a side one way or another. I view that to be part of the mandate of humanity. Um, and Palestine, in many ways, is the litmus test, as people have been saying. It's yeah. most definitely not the only, only injustice. It isn't. But it is a wake-up call in a way that, in a way that is unprecedented perhaps in this moment i would just say the fact that i've been interested in justice justice really the word for quite some time i grew up as an immigrant my mom's side of the family is kurdish i'm very well aware of discrimination and uh inequality i would say very basically speaking i am yeah um i come from a kentucky working class family my father studied american history in college and i was so raised on the powerful stories of the American Revolution. I've always had a deep dedication to freedom. And unfortunately, at the beginning of my life, I was presented with a, a view of history that is deeply ahistorical, a view of history that is deeply whitewashing and imperialist, which reinforces the power structures that be. And over the years of independent study, over the years of that dedication to freedom, that is how I come to support the Palestinian people. And that is why I'm here for the liberation of not only the Palestinians, but of every free human being on planet Earth in love and solidarity and in respect. Okay. Um, that's, you guys are both, uh, I know you won't appreciate this, but uh, you are... Uh, everyone on this college campus is protesting against Palestine is, is very or pro protesting against Israel's genocide in uh, uh, upon the Palestinian population is is very inspirational. And I, I see a lot of other college campuses also following suit like you guys also uh, mentioned uh, some of the ones that were there even before. Uh, Columbia University uh, set up encampments. It seems like uh, Yale, MIT, uh, Berkeley, and many others are now following suit. And I do hope that uh, this will be successful overall. Do you mind showing around a little bit, like outside, uh, just so we can get a quick glance of what's going on out there, what the what the vibes are like? The vibes are impeccable. Vibes are impeccable. Your vibes Bye, are impeccable. I'm very, I'm, listen, not, it probably doesn't mean much, but I am very proud of you guys. You guys are doing a phenomenal job. We take the compliment and give it to the people of Palestine. Yeah. Let me, I have some Discord in front of 
how do you switch around your camera? I don't use Discord. Hold up. No, this is good. That's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. There it is. You did it. So these are our tents. We have a lot. Um, I'm just going to move, stepping on people's stuff, but... Okay. Wow. This is our programming. Their box. Justin is no committed. Summary execution. Please keep them. We center Gaza. We're here for a purpose and for a reason. We need to make sure that in all of our conversations, we are centering Gaza because... Although what we're doing here is incredible, and I am so, so grateful to be in community with each of you, we need to remember what we're here for. Please stay tuned. We have a lot of programming coming up. Um, also, this is, our pro this is our programming board of what we have for the day to rest day. Okay. And then at night, we do assembly, so just updates on um if any decision making needs to happen there is anything important that has come up with the university um that's when we do our assemblies there is a first aid tent over here and then i want to show you to our cornucopia okay we have um sleeping supplies laid out here this is where we have our food and we have um, a wonderful um volunteer like students who are um categorizing all the donations that come um, and then, like, handing them out to people who want. We have plenty of things, I would say. And then I guess this is, like, a larger view. This is where the faculty, that over there at Low Library, is where the faculty had their walkout um, earlier today. I am. what else do we want to show them? Let's show them the front. So the front gate, we have our proud and beautiful Jewish Voice for Peace students who have volunteered help with security, keep the community safe from anti-Semitic attacks by the Zionists against our anti-Zion and against Islamophobic attacks. Yeah, We're now walking. I wanted, I wanted to speak on that a little bit as well. There are always going to be uh, agitators and agent provocateurs uh, in, in protests like this that infiltrate to make it seem like uh, the overall protest is not a, uh, about Palestine, but about uh, a whole litany yeah. of different I think issues. These, these media narratives, these ways of manufacturing the consent of the American people are not to be taken seriously. Yeah. They're very clearly the operation of the media and surveillance state. Here are guidelines. We give a briefing to people as they come in about what the guidelines are for being in this space. Um, and then we have entrance and exit on both sides. Yeah, uh, sick. What do you what do you say to like, what do you say to people that are trying to bastardize this? Because apparently there was like some kind of uh, like anti-Semitic sign that snuck through or something, and then everyone was pointing to it to be like this entire protest is actually anti-Semitic. Like people hyperventilating about this sort of shit when the obvious protests are about Israel's actions in in Gaza and divesting and making sure that the Columbia University. Uh, divests from uh, the the genocide that Israel is conducting in Gaza. Like I said, I personally don't want to give um, any more attention um, to media that would uh, seek to um, seek to distract from the genocide and seek to distract from uh, what the students' demands are from their university. Um, that being said, we have our community guidelines. This is a safe space um, for everybody so long as they are committed to the uh, demands that we have of the university um, and we maintain our focus uh, on those demands. That's it. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you so much, guys. Uh, is there anything else you want to say before uh, we, we uh, get back to our, our coverage? Um, yeah, on our demands. You can um, flip the camera tuned. back, by the way, <laughs> if you don't Sorry. mind. I think my mom is calling me at the same time. Parents have been really worried. Wait, how do I turn? I'm sure they're very proud of you guys. I hope so. I hope that my um, my Trump endorsing father will see the wisdom and will see the beauty in what we're creating and will come along with us in justice. One day. You my fans are scared. Yep. Okay. Thank you guys so much for um hope you have a good live stream. All, All right. power Thank to you. people. All right. Um that was
sick. No, those dude, oh, it's awesome. Dude, They're cool I, it, it makes me it, listen. This is, you know, this is not about us. It's not about me. This is not about anything, but, uh, but what is going on in Gaza, but it does make me very happy to see. It does make me very happy to see. This is not, uh, a fight that Palestinians have to face alone. I would say that as someone who's been an anti-Zionist for, uh, a, you know, very publicly an anti-Zionist for uh, a decade plus, I was, uh, you know, it definitely did feel a lot more alone 10 years ago than it does now. And I do think that those even in Gaza, in the brief moments that they do have access to the internet, they, they do see it. And I'm sure that they appreciate it as well. At least as far as I've seen, they do. They certainly do appreciate it. It's great. You know, they're so focused too. Yeah. She kept bringing you back. Yeah. To say, this yeah. Is I was just being, a, yeah, I was being a dickhead. No, I'm kidding. I was, you're I, being a proud uncle. Well, the thing is when I ask specific questions, I'm doing that because I want her to respond in a way that I assume she's going to. Like when mm -hmm. I ask, like, uh, when I ask questions, there's a, I, I do it to invoke response, uh, deliberately. I'm not sure. sure. No, I'm, it, it is. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, um, is there a way to donate to them? No, do not donate to them. They have enough supplies, as they've said, and they are asking you to donate to asking you to donate to Palestinian causes instead directly on the ground. Okay, 